So I think the I think the most important part is uh, looking at uh, looking at you know the long term part of it. Um, when I first ran for office, many people would say, you know, I can't buy a home in Providence. The taxes are too high. Well, you know, with the with the um, uh, with the reductions that we've made, if you live in your house and you own the house, um, you're paying lower taxes than 95 percent of the state's population. So never again should someone say. I can't own uh, a house in Providence because the taxes are too high. Uh, a lot has gone into that over many years to make that possible. So, so we're happy and we're excited about that, especially as prices have risen so much and it's getting so expensive to live in Providence. In terms of the investments that we're making, you know, the, some of the most exciting investments are the investments we're making in the neighborhoods. So people should expect to see even more work being done on streets and sidewalks, even more work being done on our parks, uh, for our young people throughout the city, uh, more, more youth working throughout the summer, and our $5 summer camp, that continues serving thousands of families throughout our city. Um, so those are, those are the highlights that we're really excited about. Um, but you know, there's so much to, that, that's going to allow continued uh, good work coming out of the city. Um, I also forgot to mention, uh, when I took office, we did street sweeping throughout the city only one time each street uh, throughout the year. We've quadrupled that. In this budget, we're going to see at least every street in the city be street sweeped four times. So, you know, we still have more to go, but we made the investments that people have asked for and uh, we're providing better services. Mayor, there are three yeah. council people that either felt this process move very quickly, those two council votes were one right after another, and also said that his constituents were telling them their rents are going up because yeah. of these rebounds. So while you lower taxes, you still pay more taxes. Yeah. What do you have to say to those renters? You've got inflation, you've got high gas prices, yeah. rents are rising. Yeah, so rents are definitely rising and uh, they've gone up these past three years. There's been no tax increases um, over the past three years, but rents have, have still risen. And so, you know, I, I sat down and I listened to, to advocates on, on the other side um, and uh, you know, they, they suggest that because taxes, their, their tax rates or, or their taxes will rise, they have to pass it down to tenants. But I ask myself, what about the last three years where there have been no tax increases? Um, they've still increased rents. So um, on the one hand, they've already increased rents. On the second hand, you know, you know at, a, at, a, at a policy level, we want to incentivize home ownership as much as possible. Um, as you know, prices get more expensive, cost of living gets more expensive, and as people are getting displaced, I think the, the, the most important policy to prevent gentrification or displacement in the community is for people to have equity and home ownership throughout the city. And uh, when you look at how low we've come with the uh, owner-occupied um, um, uh, residential tax rate, 95% uh, of the state, uh, population of the state, uh, pays uh, pays higher taxes um, than um, than our residents do. You know we're doing what we can to incentivize more home ownership and to provide support for our our residential homeowners. And the fire chief salary is that that's now defunded, correct? Um, it uh, it is. Uh, the fire chief position was um, was unfilled, um, and so you know that's something that we disagreed on. But at the end of the day, is not going to make like a material difference one way or the other. The last time. Uh, oh, I opposed it this time as well. Okay. Um, it, this has been an ongoing sort of uh, dispute. Um, this dates back to about four years ago, and it's something that never that never got resolved. So, in this final budget, the uh, I guess for accounting purposes, some things got changed. Uh, but in terms of you know being able to provide you know public safety services, nothing changes. My last question for you is just, of course, this is an exciting day, but I'm sure there were challenges along the way. Um, I know you just spoke about, you know, a couple of disagreements, but anything in particular that sticks out where you're just really happy it was able to come to fruition today? Yeah, you know, the, um, you know, this budget does so many different, so many different things. Um, it supports the development of the Superman building as well. Um, it, um, it, um, you know, it also, um, you know, as I mentioned, it allows us to continue providing high-quality city services. Uh, the only reason we're able to maintain, uh, maintain that 
is because of good fiscal st stewardship over the previous years. And uh, you know, we also have to be honest, um, the, the federal supports also help. Um, so you, know, you combine that all together, you just find a way to make the numbers work for this current year, and it sets you up you know, in, with a solid foundation for the coming years. Um, but um, to be honest, there, there isn't just one thing, it's all of it put together, it's sort of like all, all a mismatch, uh, uh, mismatch that you make work at the end of the day. Um, but um, at the end of the day, I think that residents will see more investments in the neighborhoods. Uh, we can continue our investments in young people. And uh, you know, we did as best as possible to keep lowering tax rates. And for residential, owner-occupied, um, we now have one of the lowest tax rates in the state, which is really, really exciting. Mayor, can you uh, talk a little bit about the um, about affordable housing as far as initiatives and, and outlining what the budget does for that? It's obviously been a big uh, point of conversation, especially with the Superman building. What are the initiatives and what exactly is being put towards affordable housing? Right. So, so there are two main streams, for, main streams of funding for affordable housing. One comes directly from our budget. Remember a couple of years ago we created the Providence Housing Trust Fund. And this is the first time that there's a dedicated fund um, uh, funded here at the city level for affordable housing. That has allowed us to already make investments in affordable housing and we'll continue making them you know, for, for years to come. On top of that, we've also made a decision to you know, allocate, a, allocate a big chunk of our federal funds towards affordable housing development. And this is gonna pay dividends for many years to come. Um, as, you, as you may know, when we invest in affordable housing, um, it's usually part of the entire you know, funding stack. Um, and so um, sometimes our money is the last money in. If there's a gap to fill, you know, after you get federal funds, you get private funds, we put these dollars in. So we're leveraging you know, significant funds from elsewhere so that our, our, uh, our dollars go far beyond what we could do on our own. I think it's the smart way to invest. We, we do it together with uh, many community, public and private partners. And it's gonna allow us to create a lot more affordable housing in the years to come, which is another deep, deep need in our city. In, in creating that affordable housing, you know, there, there's a bill in the, in the State House that it, it talks about using you know, abandoned schools or even mills um, these large uh, pieces of infrastructure for affordable housing. Are there any initiatives or goals moving forward to use those? Oh, absolutely. The, the challenge in Providence is that if you look at all of the, all of the mills that uh, perhaps were abandoned or even active as mills uh, 20 years ago, they've almost all been converted to residential already. There just aren't that many left out there that are waiting to be converted. And that's part of, you know, the, you know people want to live in Providence and so the supply has, has met that demand. But even in spite of converting many of those mills into, into housing, we still see demand is high. People want to live in the city, which is a good thing, but at the same time, it, it brings its challenges around affordability. So you know, what you see throughout the city right now, you see a lot of new development. You see a lot of development downtown. Almost all new buildings that have gone up downtown are either hotels or residential apartments. And what we're also seeing are a lot of conversions. So buildings that were commercial, they're being converted into residential here in the downtown space. So we're being as creative as, as we can, but there just aren't abandoned buildings waiting to be converted. You know, they've already been used up.